freedom. I want freedom. I'm going to turn to Stan. Um, Stan, you, you have such a long, long, long association as well. Like, like Roy. Maybe not back to the past. It, it, it's really funny listening to Roy speak because I was born in 1962. So I grew up listening to Lowell's music as a child. And what's so funny about Roy's story, if you fast forward 20 years to 1985, I was playing, I, 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 I'm a guitarist, but I joined this, I played keyboards on a gig once by mistake. And somebody saw me in the crowd and said, there's a young guy who plays keyboards. Can he get him in the band? They were just doing, they were, they were a club band. And I, I joined them, but in that, the drummer in that club band was my cousin, Sylvester Dow. And he said, I didn't know you played keyboards. And I said, oh, well, I can do. He said, well, Lowell, you know Lowell Aitken? And I said, what, the Lowell Aitken? And he said, yeah, 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 the Lowell Aitken. He says, he needs a keyboard player. And I said, well, yeah, but what do you mean, the? I said, do you play for him? He said, yeah. He said, come down to the rehearsal. Now, I walked into this rehearsal, and I knew, strangely enough, I knew the trumpeter, it was Tony Robinson, and... I knew the two guitarists, Clem Dublin and, Ke and Kerry Kemp. I knew them and John Southgate on bass. I remember thinking, and I said, oh, oh, I know, yeah, what's happening here? He said, oh, we play for Lowell Aitken. And, and I, I still said, what, the Lowell Aitken? Because in my head, I've got Lowell Aitken records at home. I don't know what we're doing in this dodgy rehearsal room in Leicester. And then look, in comes Lowell. And I, I, I kind of work out, I can, it really is the Lowell Aiken. I, <laughs> I was a bit starstruck. <laughs> and uh, he came over to me and said, um, yeah, this one goes E flat, C minor. And I went A flat, B flat. And he went, oh, you know your cards. And I went, well, I know them ones. <laughs> All right. So, but I was a little bit mesmerised because the band was shocking, if I'm being totally honest. It was, I was like, I kept thinking, how can this be the Lowell Aitken with these? I kept thinking, in my mind, he would have had the best Jamaican artist um, players playing in. And I kept thinking, how, how are we his band? Um, I learnt his set. He was quite surprised because I knew every single one of his songs and I could play him without thinking. Um, but I kept saying to him, and I, I, when I look back, it might have been a little bit um, strange, but I kept saying to him, no, why, why are these people in your band? I can get better players. You deserve better players. Uh, and he said, do you know any? I said, well, I can get your horn section for a start. Um, and then I think, I think I, might, I, I persuaded him to change my, uh, change the drummer for Dave Anderson. And we started, it started being a, a quite a decent band. And at that time, the, the, that Lowell was kind of getting a load of little gigs, like um, Gaz's Rocking Blues, um, little Manchester gigs, where we were gigging. But we were kind of a high energy band. And I kind of, I kept thinking that this is Lowell, in my mind, I kept thinking, this is Lowell Aitken. He deserves the best. And I kept thinking, let's not just roll up and be any band let's be a great band um and i don't know why but lowell start to stop coming to the rehearsals and, I, and he said i don't need to come to the rehearsals Stan. you make sure you make sure that the band's tight and i'll just come and sing and now i mean <clears throat> in hindsight i should have said no it's your band you do it um but i was so honored to be given that power and and it was it was so funny. And then we just started gig. We started doing the international scar festivals. It started all of a sudden snowballing into the. Uh, I would say, just before the. I would say it was the end of the second wave. I would say where we started getting great gigs. Started going around Europe, going. You know, Lowell was the first person. First person that had taken me on a plane to do a gig. You know, it was kind of. You know, we we just all and we got a great band together, and I would always say I've done loads of things since, um, but I always say where it all started for me was Lowell going E flat C minor and me going A flat B flat because 
he just he trusted me and it made and it just led to other things, which is really strange. I'm glad Steve's back because that's how I met Steve. Lowell, in his um, eternal wisdom, uh, one of the guitarists, well, the guitarist never turned up, obviously he's gone. Um, the guitarist didn't turn up for a gig, Clem Dublin, he didn't turn up. And Freetown with a support band. And Lowell just went up to Steve and said, no, went and said, who's the guitarist? I think Steve said to me, he said, you're playing for me tonight. And I had looked at Lowell and thought, oh, okay. Um, he said, Lowell says, you don't know the songs, but stand next to Stan and he'll talk you through it. They're really simple songs. And I spent the whole night going E, C, G to Steve. Steve, <laughs> Steve, it was like someone, had, Steve was like the cat that got the cream because, you know, I, I, what happened to Steve that night it was what I've dreamt of happening to me, going to see a band and someone say, come on and play with your with your idol. Um, and I always envy Steve for that. I always think Steve went to play one day and ended up playing for his heroes and continued to play for him after that. That's, yeah. that's yeah. fantastic. And they, Stan, thank you. Um, so just, just to clarify, two quick things if I can. When you became the governor of the backing band, yeah. Did you rename them? Did you choose the name? Oh, I can tell you what happened with that. It's really funny. We were we were at Gossips one night um, and we were walking onto stage and Gas said to me, we played there before and he said, I can't, what's the name of the band? I said, we've not got a name. He said, you've got to have a name as we were. I said, I don't know. He said, I can't, you just can't say Lowell Aitken and his band. <clears throat> and at the time he was playing Landlords and Tenants. And he said, you called the pressure tenants, and that's literally what happened. <laughs> and that's literally how we got the name. That's fantastic. And, um, and how long did you play with Love? On a, um, for for the strangest it? thing, I started playing with him in 85, and I left, not under a cloud. What happened was we supported Desmond Decker in Ireland, and uh, Desmond Decker's management poached me from they um they asked me to join their band and it um which for me was you know that was another level for me but in a way Lowell was quite upset with it when i look back and i understand why because um he felt that i'd used him as a stepping stone to something else and he was he was the one that brought me in and how could i leave him and i understand that um so for about six months um i was with desmond and oh, then, then slowly Lowell would get me. If I wasn't, with, if I wasn't working with Desmond, Lowell, Lowell would phone you up and go, um, he'd go, Stan. And, uh, or he'd say like this, I'm going to phone you tomorrow. At that time, I had a mobile phone. He, but he used to call it my walking phone. You have your walking phone? And I'd say, yeah, yeah. He said, I'm going to phone you tomorrow. I said, what for? I said, have you got a gig? And he'd go, uh, yes and no. <laughs> I said, well, well, it's happening. I'll phone you tomorrow. Didn't phone for a week. And then he'd, he'd say, what are you doing tonight? I said, why? He said, we've got a gig in London. And I'd go, yeah, I'll do it. And it's really funny. Lowell was one of two people that I would, wouldn't ask any questions about how much we were getting paid or where the gig was. If Lowell said we had a gig, if, if Lowell could come back today and say to me, Stan, we got a gig in wherever tomorrow, I'd go on the gig, and if we got paid, we got paid. Because for me, it wasn't anything to do with the money, nothing at all. I was so honoured to play for Lowell Aitken. It was, um, you know, but, but nearly, but not as honoured as my mum and dad. They thought, I was, you know, my mum and dad thought, my mum just thought, you know, like me. No, I like him. What he lives in? He lives in Saint Matthews. I went. Yeah, I know. It's weird, but he lives in Saint Matthews. He lives. He lives literally a mile from my house, and lived there for a while. And I never knew. In fact, there's a club around the corner where he used to play all the time. We, I just thought he was some old black guy that played in the club, but it was because he, he was under the name Lorenzo. I'd been in that club many times. But didn't realise it was the Low Lake. Oh, it's amazing! Amazing. And the, the good thing about the thing that I always like about Lowell, he would try anything, you know, if, whatever the latest thing was going on. You know, the amount of times I've been to studio to do a new Jack Swing song, Lowell, an acid song, a drum and bass song, um, 
mm. stand by me with a soul to soul beat, but with a reggae drop back. It's just, I, I'd be like, he'd, he'd do covers of songs. And he'd, one, one song I remember him doing, and it was um, Get on the Good Foot by James Brown. And I went, No, oh, it's Get on the Good Foot, Lowell. He said, No, it's not. It's Really G today. <laughs> and then just, just called his song Really G. Oh, it was amazing. It really was. I mean, I played bass for him in the studio, guitar for him in the studio. Keyboards from in the studio, done backing vocals, percussion, you know, it's all just, just, it was just, you never knew what was going to happen. And I loved it, absolutely. Freedom. Oh, freedom. 